I want to pop in with a quick timely update that my 12-week curriculum called Smart Body, Smart Mind, some people know this as SBSM, we will be running it again in September 2023. To be exact, we will open up registration on September 12th for one week and we will begin around the 24th of September, a fresh new round. This will be the 14th time we have run this powerful online curriculum. That's all I'm gonna say about it now. I just wanna make sure you know, just in case you're wondering how you can do this work with me, how you can put the, the education and the theory into practice. Of course, Smart Body, Smart Mind is also education, but a lot of practice and people have been doing this curriculum for many years now. We've had people from all over the country go through this curriculum and have much success. Check it out, get on the wait list and mark your calendars for September 12th, which is when we open up registration. Hey everyone, it's Irene. I thought I'd pop in and just do a quick video to read a couple comments that I received after a very popular post that went out I do not believe that any child should learn, should learn how to meditate and be mindful. So I want to break this down simply. When I say meditate, I mean higher consciousness technology training. So TM, Vipassana, other forms of meditation where, where it requires our nervous system to be absolutely 100% regulated. So the first thing that we have to look at is why did the meditation world blow up in the last little while? And I think it's just another, it, it has been another um, practice, another strategy, another tool one could say coping and management tool to refocus our mind on something. But remember, I've been doing this for, for a long time and I've worked with a lot of people, privately in group, whom thought that they were meditating for years. But all they were doing was um, managing their sensations in a way that that was we could say more sophisticated. So as they were thinking that they were meditating, they were just in the process of suppressing their survival physiology because they weren't connected to their insides, their body. There is a wonderful interview I did, I'm just making sure I get it right, from 2017 called Meditation and Mindfulness 101. This is with my good friend, a mentor and colleague, Chris Durkies. Chris and I have done, I think, four to five interviews, and this was our first one. And we get into the different kinds of meditation. We get into mindfulness and what that is. And Chris is a former priest. He was a monk. And one of the things that we talk about in this video, so again, it's called Meditation and Mindfulness 101, Chris Durkey's, just look it up, you'll find it on my YouTube channel. He says, and we know this, and I know people who are, are devoted to Buddhist study, who run retreats in Nepal, in the Pyrenees, in all over the world. And when we look at um, monastic traditions, they are not allowed as little people to start meditating until they are, are adult or until you've been in that monastery for a very long time. Because you have to train your discipline, your body, your physiology, and then you are literally given the allowance and the um, green light, you can now begin to meditate. But it's become a fad. It's become, become such a fad, such that um, a few studies get popped out about how um, this this stuff called meditation has shown in these monks to shift brain chemistry and all these things. Um, you know, the studies are out there, therefore we should do it as Westerners. 
And there's a problem with that. We are not um, skilled to the level that they are and they're not living in the real, the real, I guess that's up for debate, the real world, the world that is what we live in, where most of us aren't already regulated. So just know there's nothing wrong with practicing these practices that are ancient, that are high technology uh, practices. Right, you have to. We've got to go back and look at what the human is. The human is animal physiology, mammalian physiology. We have the same physiology as primates and our cats and dogs, but then we have this thing up here that is a brain, that is way more advanced than those primates, and our friendly cats and dogs. And it is also the same brain that can suppress an impulse for an entire lifetime to the degree that it makes us sick and gives us cancer and we die. That shows how powerful this brain is of ours, this, this we could say this cortex, to suppress and to keep things under, 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 under. But it also, because of this power, has the ability to give us telepathy, I believe in this and um, have intention. This is where the whole you know, secret and the power of intention came in. But what we don't hear about in those stories of the secret and creating our reality is that a lot of times those intentions don't really work because the system is dysregulated and those intentions are being created from a dysregulated state. So the intentions aren't actually pure for the person and their purpose and where they want to go in the world. Um, so. so then I'm gonna go back to um, the other questions that were kind of common. And that was, um, but Irene, um, I agree that a child shouldn't meditate when they're in a dysregulated state, but what about when they're in a regulated state? Isn't it okay for them to be taught mindfulness? And my answer still goes back. A child's brain is still developing. I don't remember the exact numbers, but it's like some say that our brain isn't fully developed until after even 20 years old. I know that depends a lot on how we were raised, how we were nurtured, but... Um, Again, that technology of our higher consciousness, we want to wait until the rest of the system is fully cooked. This is words from my husband, uh, Seth, whom some of you know. Um, we want to wait till the system is fully cooked, fully baked, fully ready and prepared, and then we put the person into this higher level of consciousness training. So I think what might be happening is people are using the term meditation and mindfulness to depict um, a child being immersed in something. Or um, who here was taught when you were young to do your nightly prayers or your morning prayers? I'm not saying that I ever did that, but I know that that's what some people do. You see it on shows. You say your prayers at night. You say what you're grateful for. Those things... Um, to me, I'm not saying, you know, you gotta be in faith and practice religion. I'm not saying that you can, nothing wrong with it. But what I'm saying is having gratitude, sitting and asking your kids, what was um, the one thing today that this, or whom are you grateful for? What did you enjoy today when you were doing this? Um, let's take a moment to look through just the pictures of this book, whatever it might be, right? Now, I'm also, aware that some of you would be like, well, no, 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 that's not what I do. I actually ask my child to sit still and just focus on their breathing. And again, do what you wish to do. And I will say at that young age of, let's say under 16, why do we have to do that if the kid is regulated? I know this is a little controversial, but, um, I just feel that it needs to be reserved for more mature, later circumstance. Now, I wanna read a comment that someone sent in. And this was in regards to some stories I sent the other day about the importance of getting our aggression out. Um, because 
I would say, and again, I'm generalizing a high percentage of kiddos that are being asked to go into what we might be calling meditation or mindfulness states are, are just suppressing what's there. You know, and they, they need to move, they need to get their energy out. For the most part, that's what they need to do. A child is like a little puppy with a higher brain, right? If you've ever had a little puppy, they're crazy. They need to move, they need to, they need to run, they need to be fed, they need to be cared for, all these things. So this um, person wrote to me, this is actually an, an, an old friend, she said, I had so much anger and rage as a little kid. And by the way, the, the post used the example of a kid tearing up a phone book because of a bad thing that happened at school, right? So that's the context for why we said, give the kid uh, a phone book and let them rip the heck out of it to get that, that anger, that rage out. If they were in a classroom where a, te where a teacher wasn't being that nice or where the teacher where the teacher we could, the kid could feel the dysregulation in the teacher right again this isn't a hit against teachers it's just that there are some circumstances where a, a child is not attuned to and they get frustrated just like a child gets frustrated if a parent isn't attuning to them and that's where a tantrum happens a tantrum doesn't occur because the kid is trying to be a, an asshole that the tantrum is happening because they have hit a, a, a high point of, of, of just, I can't handle this anymore. No one's listening to me. No, man, no one's letting me express. I'm hot. I'm cold. I'm hungry. I'm overwhelmed. And so the kid blows up, right? There's a reason that's coming out. They're not premeditating that tantrum. And so if we think about, again, these um, new not quite self-regulated little people whom are still figuring out their emotions, their sensations, and then they have something or they see something or a kid picks on them on the playground or whatever, there needs to be this ability for them to get this stuff out. And so this friend wrote to me, she said, I had so much repressed anger and rage as a little kid about school and I dreamt about sneaking in after hours with a baseball bat and smashing and destroying everything I could. That was elementary school and I was a good girl. And she writes, a phone book would have been a nice thing to have, ha, ha, ha. And so, um, you know, I said, yeah, hey, can I share that? And she said, of course, yes. And so, again, if you're new here, this might be completely ass backwards and 180 degrees where there's so much out there that's saying we have to be kind, we have to be empathetic, we have to be mindful, we need to calm ourselves. And, and while that's true, we don't wanna be violent, we don't wanna go hurt people. Um, if we don't get that energy out, it then expresses in a way that is violent. This is why we have disasters occur where kids do things that they shouldn't do, yeah? They've never had a chance to let the survival energy out. The time out culture that a lot of kids were brought up with um, and that got really popular not too long ago where a, a child is asked to like sit on the step or sit by themselves and cool off, that's not helping them. And so what I often think is occurring when we are asking a kid to be mindful and meditative when they are stressed is they're just suppressing that energy, that animal that needs to really come out. Um, and then another woman wrote, uh, a mom, she said, I saw your post on kids meditation. I agree, after reading your post, my kids were fighting and I grabbed two magazines and I had them rip the pages because they were mad at each other and it helped a lot, thank you so much. And then she sent me two pictures of the mess afterwards with paper everywhere and the kids just more calm, right? So they were able to get that energy out of their system. Super, super duper important. Now, there was another question here. Oh, the other thing I'll mention, if you haven't checked out my article, it's a long one. It's more like a long form essay. It's called, Is There a Mindfulness Bubble Waiting to Burst? I wrote this back in 2016. And at the time, um, it was what I was seeing 
was occurring, sort of my prediction for if we don't shift this mindfulness bubble, if we don't start teaching people how to really work with their physiology and get their animal impulses out in a safe and contained way, this mindfulness, we could say meditation um, trend, it's gonna, it, it's gonna burst. Because again, what's happening is these people that come in, my students, and I'm sure there's some of you here that know this, they have been trying and trying and trying to meditate and be mindful and they can't, or they think they're doing it, but then they're in a situation and they get triggered and their system breaks down, their system cracks, and they're going, I just spent the last two years being mindful and meditating with all of the things and all of the apps and and all of the retreats and I, I lost it. That's a sign that that wasn't actually building real true capacity. And so my worry again with this, this trend of teaching our kids to be uh, still and quiet and center themselves is it's actually disrupting their ability to express what they need to express. Now, I also know that some of you are like, yeah, yeah, of course, Irene, if they're dysregulated, they need to cry, they need to get their emotions out, they need to scream. Um, but again, I go back to that piece of them, that the same question, why not teach them mindfulness when they are um, regulated? It, it's, again, just not necessary. Teach them how to connect to things. Teach them how to concentrate and focus on a project, on a craft, on coloring, on reading, um, on making something, on playing with their siblings, um, creating. And then when they are older and they realize there's this higher consciousness that they want to train and practice and have strong direct intention, because they have been so well regulated, it'll just be like a piece of cake and it won't be difficult and it won't be hard. Yeah, someone just wrote, yes, I was dissociating. I was dissociating thinking I was meditating. This is the thing. Thank you for writing that down, Serena. How do I say this? When, when you're new here, so I know there's people here whom have just, you just look at my, my Instagram posts um, and that's fine. And then there's our students here who have kind of crossed into this world of holy shit, I thought I was regulated. I am not regulated. Let's work on this. When you start to feel the nuance and the, 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 the quality of being in your body and being in your environment, you start to realize how quick your system is to disconnect when things become intense. And I've interviewed many of my students where they are like, yeah, I did breath work and meditation. And then the moment you ask me to orient for three seconds or two minutes or one minute, everything just floods in. And so that's an indication that that breath work and that meditation was just a management tool to keep things contained. Now, people often say, well, should we not do that then? And I say, well, if being mindful in the way that you know know how now and meditating, quote unquote, because again, it's probably not true meditation in the way you know how, I know I'm making a generalization here, but let's just say that's the case. I would rather you do that, do this strategy to manage the intensity, if that means it's going to prevent you from hitting your kids. If you need to take a deep breath and, and do some management strategies to not harm yourself or other people, then of course do this stuff. But the question is, what does it take to be in the physiology and feel it and let the energy move so it can release while you are in that conflict or while you are in that activation. And that takes skill and that takes time. I don't know how to explain all the, the situations where I've seen folks in what we would be calling a spiritual bypass where they're, they, again, they think they're going into this higher level of ascension of um, um, spirituality and they're actually just completely bypassing their body and they're flipping into dissociation. They're numbing out. And um, there's a very kind of 
a specific affect you see with these people. It's they're, they're very calm. I'm so calm. Hello. Yes, my name is Irene. Ugh, I just, I can't. <laughs> I hope that came through, right? There's no life. It doesn't mean that, that I can't go into a softer tone and, 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 and shift gears into more neutral territory to teach or to work with someone, but there's, you'll start to see it if you look for it. There is this monotone lack of what's called prosody, voice intonation. There's no juice in their body. It's like they're completely numbed out. And a lot of these folks are teaching these meditative practices, these spiritual practices. But again, this comes back to that article, um, is there a mindfulness bubble waiting to burst? If you read that article, it, it's like we're starting to see it. A lot of these um, practices and these traditions um, have been completely butchered um, for the Western population. And they just don't, they just don't um, line up with where we are in our physiology, where we are in our communities, and where we are in our unhealed traumas. So again, hope you found some fun out of that little um, acting that I just did. Question comes from polyvagal therapist. Irene, do you think we have a society of suppressed anger? Yep, 100%. Um, when I'm teaching in Smart Body, Smart Mind, this is like, a very large portion of the training calls and and we are all working in service to build capacity so that we can express healthy aggression and anger, 100%. Um, it's actually been documented that stored anger being nice all the time is connected to autoimmune diseases, neurodegenerative conditions, and certain cancers. Just read Gabor Mate's references in his book, When the Body Says No, 100%. This is why I'm so uh, doggone just like, I don't even wanna say this is, a, this is controversial or just my opinion. This, we know this in the research and in people's stories. Those who've, who have repressed and, and held in and managed and breathed their way with a nice smile on their face and being all calm through a life of hell and trauma, these people get sick because they're not expressing. Anger is a huge, huge um, energy. There's so much um, potential energy in that, in that emotion, in that, sen it's really a sensation. It's an action, right, to protect, to fight, to flee. That is anger responses. And when we imagine you're suppressing a, a, a dog in a cage, we know what happens with zoos when you put animals in zoos, it's de devastating for them. So, so when we do that to ourselves, when we literally lock down, lock in these emotions, we create toxicity inside. So yes, 100%. We could say that we have a, a epidemic of just disconnection from our impulses in our body. Someone said in a comment that meditation can be a higher level of consciousness, but it can also be looking at the sky or a rock or drawing or walking or jumping or feeling the body. No, that's not meditation. That's being aware of the environment. That's being actively involved in an activity, walking, jumping, um, feeling the body. That would be having the skill of interoception it's okay if we're not meditating. So it's like we've gotten this, we've become almost um, attached to, I am meditating, I am meditating. I am meditating because the monks and the Buddhists, they do this and they are higher than me and holier than me, therefore this is this. And it's okay to just stare at a tree. You don't have to call it meditating, you're just connecting with earth. You're connecting with the alive world. You're practicing natural, being in a natural living state with the environment. That's enough. And that's the thing is, again, as I look at some of the, the comments and read some of the things, there's this, it almost is like there's this attachment to, I'm a meditator, therefore I have value. Um, so just be really careful with 
these pieces like be careful for be careful if you're doing these things because this is a, a um this is a badge of honor this is a statement it's like i am this i am that what about a meditation that is allowing of what we feel or think well that's just being being embodied and sovereign in your body so again, this comes back to what I just said. How can we just take this word meditation out? Again, there are many different types of meditation. Like I said, go watch the interview with Chris Durkey's Mindfulness and Meditation 101. Um, it's okay if you're not, I don't meditate really very much. I've started to the last year because my system is finally out of freeze. Um, so I have some practices, but they're not formal. Um, but my system wasn't able to do it and I didn't really mind it, it just was okay I'm not doing this right now so um, again just be careful be careful of how you might be putting um, a pressure on yourself to do what all the cool kids are doing you just don't do that don't do that um, I'm gonna also address one more piece on anger because the same friend whom noted about how she wanted to go to her school and destroy everything with a baseball bat. She also made a comment afterwards mentioning that the last few years, which have been stressful for many, no matter what side of the fence you were on, the last three years was stressful. And there were a lot of folks who felt trapped, literally, um, or trapped in that they couldn't speak up and we need to fit in as humans and so i sense there is a huge tsunami of anger that needs to come out of people after the last few years and a lot of people don't know that it's there and the reason why i'm i'm theorizing this is just last weekend here in Vancouver, it's been really warm. We've had a heat wave that is not typical of May. And we live, my husband and I, quite close to the water, to the beach, very, very popular beach. And normally on a weekend when it's sunny, you, you hear music and people screaming and all this kind of stuff. But there was a level of violence that I could hear coming out of the screams like there was this one guy that I swear to God, he he was he was yelling like he was trying to kill someone. <laughs> and it was so loud that even the next day, our neighbors who just moved in, she said, is that normal? Like, is that something that typically happens here? And I was like, no, like usually you hear music and some bass and people playing volleyball and all these things. But that was, in, that was like, I've never heard it before. Interestingly enough, went for a walk a couple days after that rowdy night and there was an entire area that had been vandalized, destroyed, um, down the street, um, a, a bike company, complete vandalization. This never happens in this neighborhood. Um, and then, true story, I was supposed to go in for a medical procedure, very, very um, simple thing. Um, been waiting for this thing for a year. And the surgery was canceled because the surgical center was vandalized also last weekend to the point where the elevator was destroyed because it had water damage. Someone else said a similar thing. Um, daughter went down to the beach and her and her friend didn't stick around because it felt unsafe. There was an energy, there was a vibe. And so my husband said, well, it almost feels like this summer and that weekend, it was hot, people were in the sand, they were in the sun, they were in the ocean, you know, they're wearing tank tops and shorts, and there's just more freedom, and they're finally allowing themselves to be human. That's what he said. They're allowing themselves to express um, what's been held in for so, so long. And I think he's right, and I think that um, I'm not sure if where you live, you're seeing and feeling these things, but I share this with everyone to give you all a heads up that it is so important now, especially 
to work with your stored anger, to work with your healthy aggression. Don't meditate yourself into freeze and dissociation. It, there's no badge of honor for how long you can meditate or how long you can be mindful of. Work on your biology, work on getting these energies out. If you were wronged the last three years, if you had fallouts with your family, if you didn't agree with something and, you, and you, you're just suppressing everything, find ways to get this out in a healthy, safe way. Because A, if you don't, it's just gonna fester inside and it will make us sick. We know that. So that's the first reason. The second reason is if you don't get that stuff out, your spidey senses for, for what is safe and what, what is not will be skewed. And then you won't know, um, you just won't know what is safe, what isn't. You, you will not have a good clean radar for the decision making that you do, for relationships, for what to believe, not to believe. So I just cannot recommend enough um, how important it is to work on your animal physiology, work on your fight flight, work on the sympathetic. This doesn't mean that you don't have empathy and you don't do chill self-care and you do some slower things and all these kind of things, but um, don't worry about the meditation, especially, and I'll wrap this back to the kids. Our kids have been through the bloody ringer the last three years. I won't even get into it. It's appalling what they've had to deal with. It's appalling what they've had to endure. The level of online, the level of not being able to be free, and connect and all the things, and I know not, not all kids were subjected to this, but many were. Many were isolated, many weren't allowed to go play, go to school. That is huge. And so I will leave you with this. It is not the time to teach them to be little, little Buddhas. It is the time to let their animal physiology just go nuts and to connect with them so much and to love them so much and to help them move what might be trapped because they will suppress that stuff if they are not given an opportunity to get it out. Um, so someone just said, how do you get it out? Do you have suggestions? Start with my work, start building your capacity. This isn't something where I can just say, okay, scream for five seconds into a pillow, that won't work. I have an entire playlist on my YouTube channel with uh, videos on anger and healthy aggression. If you just punch in my name with anger as medicine, that's some of my articles, anger as medicine, they pop up. And then start with my courses, start with my classes, start doing the practices on my site. Because um, again, as someone mentioned, I think our entire society suppresses anger. Yes, this is something I teach in my classes all the time. We do not have a healthy, visual and representation and model for what it looks like as humans in this current world, living in society, we don't have a model for what it looks like to release this stuff in a way that isn't violent. And right now there's violence all over and I do believe that a very big portion of what drives that is this unresolved trauma unresolved anger. We know this from case studies of sociopaths and psychopaths who have literally blown people up and have been serial killers. You go back into their history, they had early developmental infant trauma. Um, and it completely matches up. I did a video on this called The Story of Teddy. The study of story of Teddy is about Theodore Kaczynski. Peter Levine interviewed his mom. The story is all there listen to that, um, watch that video. It shows you how deep this violence um, and this inability to get out anger in a healthy way, how deep it goes. So um, yeah, someone said it's so hard for me to see the kids I teach and how much anger they have. Yeah, for those of you here who are like teachers, Hats off to you because there's only so much you can do in the classroom when you know that those kiddos go back 
to a house that isn't allowing them to express, the best thing you can do as a teacher is to be regulated in your own body and have so much fucking capacity that when those little kiddos come in and they're just wanting to just destroy each other, that you know how to hold that energy and do fun things and get them moving in a way that gets that out in a, in a safe way. Um, this is again why I just don't think that kids should be taught to meditate. Not at this current state in our world where there is so much survival energy floating around and certainly not after the last couple of years. Um, and someone just said kickboxing, karate, sprints, weights. Exercise is great, but it won't tap into that primal impulse. Sorry, exercise is great. You gotta exercise, but until you can tune into that animal impulse along with the punch and the fight, it, it, it's just punching and fighting. It won't actually get into that survival physiology. I've talked about this in other videos, so be sure to check all my anger and healthy aggression videos out. There's quite a few. Um, I'm gonna go, it's time for dinner. Um, so, to review, I know it seems to be controversial, this whole thing that I'm talking about. I don't really think it is when we look at the physiology and then we look at what meditation really is supposed to be, it's supposed to be development of this co consciousness, of this technology that is our consciousness. Wait till you're in your 20s. When there's so much regulation on board that then you bring that in and it's just like a piece of cake. If it is hard to sit and focus, you're not ready. It's just not ready, right? So um, that's one thing. And then of course, the second thing, do this work, get into your body, learn, um, become a scholar. This has been my favorite word the last couple of weeks. Become a scholar of your nervous system. Um, it is so important. We really need to understand this part of us because if we don't, we are not going to be able to harness the intelligence that is in this brain of ours and raise ourselves to a capacity that we know deep down is possible. We gotta work on the survival stress. All right, everybody, thanks so much. Bye.